Hello, comrades. The liberation of women and feminist ideals are some of the many significant aspects of socialism and anti-capitalist struggle, with many societies and groups following the idea of Marxist socialism in their revolutionary struggle. One of the biggest advocates of women's rights in historical socialist movements is Mao Zedong, former chairman of the Communist Party of China and the leader of the Chinese Revolution. While both leading the revolution and in a position of power, Chairman Mao never ceased his support for women in fighting against the oppressive nature of capitalism and its roots of patriarchal practices. Chairman Mao held great passion for the struggle of women and enacted many laws that helped to greatly benefit the women of China. In the very valuable work that is The Little Red Book, an entire section of the book is dedicated to women and the importance of their participation in the revolution, in the workforce, and in general society. Chapter 31 of the book is on the subject of women and contains seven different highly important quotes from Mao on the role of women. All of these quotes speak highly of women and their role in the revolutionary struggle, speaking of genuine equality and how no revolution can truly be successful without women having a powerful presence and a powerful role. In the crusade of furthering women's rights and reversing the reactionary policies of past dynasties, Mao Zedong enacted a law that prohibited and actually abolished the practice of arranged marriages. This allowed many who were forced into marriage under the oppressive, reactionary leadership to finally divorce their unwanted husbands and become truly free. To quote the decree, de uh, excuse me, to quote the decree regarding marriage. Under feudal domination, marriage is a barbaric and inhuman institution. The oppression and suffering borne by women is far greater than that of man. Only the victory of the workers and peasants' revolution followed by the first step toward the economic emancipation of men and women, brings with it a change in the marriage relationship and makes it free. In the Soviet districts, marriages now are contracted on a free basis. Free choice must be the basic principle of every marriage. The whole feudal system of marriage, including the power of parents to arrange marriage for their children, to exercise compulsion, and all purchase and sale in marriage contracts shall henceforth be To expand upon these actions, through the policy of Mao Zedong, child marriage was also made illegal, and the children that were forced into marriage were able to escape the entrapment of such reactionary and backwards practices. Prostitution was also abolished under Mao, in thanks to women having the ability to finally own property, unlike when they were living under the feudal society. After the communists took power and Mao became leader, women were encouraged at great length to engage in the workforce. One of the quotes that displays this best comes from chapter 31 of the Little Red Book, and is originally from the introductory note from Women Have Gone to the Labor Front, published in 1955. In order to build a great socialist society it is of the utmost importance to arouse the broad masses of women to join in productive activity. Men and women must receive equal pay for equal work in production. Genuine equality between the sexes can only be realized in the process of the socialist transformation of society as a whole. The issue of discipline is one that Mao covered many times throughout the entirety of his collected works. In chapter 26 of the Little Red Book, the section covering the issue of party discipline, originally published in his work on the reissue of the three main rules of discipline and the eight points for attention, instruction of the general headquarters of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, Mao laid out what he called the three main rules of discipline, excuse me, discipline, <laughs> and the eight points of attention. In their latter work, the seventh point of attention goes as follows. Do not take liberties with women. Essentially, this point of attention is an instruction for the People's Liberation Army to not sexually assault, harass, or abuse women under any circumstance. This isn't a rule that you see in the Army of the United States. You don't see this in the, uh, for the Army of Israel. You don't see it as a rule for the majority of the superpowers of imperialism. Since the formation of the People's Republic of China, the suffrage of women and the furthering of the liberation of women has been of the utmost importance. In the original political program of the PRC when it was founded, Article 6 of the document addresses the issue of women's rights and, and a societal, political, and economic equality with men. The article states, The People's Republic of China shall abolish the feudal system which holds women in bondage. Women shall enjoy equal rights with men in political, economic, cultural, educational, and social life. Freedom of marriage for men and women shall be put into effect. Although the years following Mao's death did result in the deterioration of some of these bits of progress, it can't be denied that during Chairman Mao's tenure as leader, a plethora of advances were made for the women's struggle, and the vast majority of women in China were able to lead lives of freedom, land, 
education in the true sense of equality. The feminism, is, uh, excuse me, the feminism of Mao Zedong is certainly something to be admired and something that many of us can learn from. I'm Jimmy Casual. Fuck you and bye.